Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast, providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space so you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. I recently joined as a member, and you can too. Apply today to become a member and immediately be connected with advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at P-O-D-G-O dot C-O. And when you go to apply and they ask you, how did you hear about Podgo? Make sure you tell them that the Vault Classic Music Review sent you. Welcome to the Vault Podcast. Classic Music Reviews. Presented by IV Creative. Now, here's your hosts, B. Cox and the crew. Greetings and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Vault Podcast. Classic Music Reviews. Presented by IV Creative. It's a perspective on the classics from a fresh point of view. We appreciate you for taking your time and lending your ears to our perspective. You could be anywhere listening to anything, but you're right here with us, so we thank you. With you today is yours truly, and with me I have my man, my guy, family, my boy Damo, cousin Damo, Dominique Marks, the creator and also host of the Raw Sex Podcast. Of course, you can check that every single week coming in either every thursday or friday depending on the schedule make sure y'all checking out that raw sex podcast making big big ways we just did our second part of in living color where we talked a little bit about interracial date in this past week so y'all make sure y'all go check out the new episode and we had a special guest on there miss keisha so some interesting perspectives i just urge y'all to go check that out so my boy damo's here in the place with me shout out to the rest of the crew to jo and of course det for them handling their business they'll be back here with us soon hopefully shout out to all the listeners out there worldwide all the continents every continent out there blasting our music and of course stateside here in the united states and in canada we appreciate all the love that you're giving and all the feedback on social media we definitely appreciate all the feedback good and bad so uh we know we can't get better (laughs) until we hear some of the criticism which is cool because we could take it we got thick skin and that's part of being in the game damo here we are yet another edition of the vault feels like it's been a while and i know that we had a lot of fallout from our tailor the tape segment with Nas and jay-z there were a lot of people figuring out is how in the world could we end up making it a tie so (laughs) but that's just the way that the cookie crumbles but it's been a while and we've had a few bonus segments on here but we're back here with another review of a potentially classic album and this one that we have today is going back to the year of 1995 specifically to September 26, 1995, and the debut studio album by legend, icon, of course, rapper Cool G Rap, and his album 456, released on Cold Chillin' Records. This was his first studio album recorded solo after he broke up with DJ Polo in 1993, and the two of them put out two classic albums, Road to Riches and... uh, Wanted Dead or Alive, and then another standout album, which was Live and Let Die, their final album released in 1992. And this was his first solo album that he released as a member on Cold Chillin' Records. So here we are, Cool G Rap, 4, 5, 6, September 26, 1995. And uh, now it's been 25 years later. And Cool G Rap, of course, a standout. And I've told you before on this podcast, for me, he's one of the four lyrical titans as far as when it comes to the golden era of hip hop. Along with Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, and KRS-One. I think they're at the top when it comes to Lyrical Titans. And he's right up there. So he came out with this album. This was his first solo effort. And uh, this was during a time where rap was starting to take a turn. And you started to see where it was heading in sort of a little bit of a different direction. But at that time, he was considered to be an OG of rap. And he was definitely making a comeback for him by himself. But I just wanted to sort of get your perspective now. I do think that this may have been the first time that you've heard this album, correct? You ain't lying. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, fi- I figured that much. And I figured that much. And that sort of speaks to who we, you know, as a rapper, he's well known within the industry amongst heads. But and amongst the mainstream audience, a lot of people don't really know a whole lot about Cool G Rap. But rappers I, I know about him. I knew who he was. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't know his music. Yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. I got older cousins, so, you know, I hear them debating music and, mm-hmm. you know, and they fake was trying to rap back yeah. in the day and they tell them about, nah, Cool G Rap. Man, you sleeping on Cool G Rap. And I'm yeah. like, Cool G Rap? Mm-hmm. Who the hell is, uh, like, uh, you know, I ain't, you know, we, I'm 10, 11, 12. I ain't really, you know, we not like how it is a day where you could hit 
go ahead, open the phone and up and and go to right to it. Yeah, Siri, right. Who's Cool G Rap? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't be like, all right, well, maybe if I run across something, and I right, well, they ain't really, I ain't never hear nothing on the radio. So I'm like, oh, who the hell is this Cool G Rap guy they talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So when you said Cool G Rap, I said, that's it. Hey, you know what? I never even listened to, I done heard a couple of him on some verses or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I might have heard my cousin play, uh, throw a cassette in. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> and that, and was, that it. was it. That yeah, was, that like, was it. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. G rap. I was like, oh shit. Oh, all right. Yeah. He he. To what I like to say, he's a rapper's rapper. And uh, what I refer to him as. And one of the things that I noticed, like listening to this album this past week, I remember even back in '95 when there was promos. Remember, like you used to watch the box. And yeah. you would watch and there would be promos about upcoming albums coming out and you would see those like intermittently between videos. I saw a lot of promos for four, five, six coming up. And you know, the most telling thing that I had about those promos was that there were quotes from all these different rappers that talked about Cool G Rap, his legacy and what he meant to them. And it was rappers like Biggie, Nas, Raekwon, Method Man, like all these different like rappers that came up and said different things about Cool G Rap. Like, yo, he's the reason why I rap. Like, yo, I got most of my stuff and he inspired me. Like, yo, he's the reason why street rap is out there. He's fire. And it just like, I'm wondering, like at 13 years old, I didn't really know a whole lot about Cool G Rap either, right? But the one thing that I did know when it, the first thing that I heard about from him was actually the track Fast Life that's on here with Nas. Now, it wasn't a radio hit. It was, it came on. You know, I saw the music video for that, you know, just in passing, watching probably Rap City one time. I really kind of fell asleep on Cool G Rap until about, I would say, the year 2000 because I heard him on two featured tracks in 2000. One was a featured track with Big L on The Big Picture, which came out in 2000. And then the other one was a track on Talib Kweli, the Train of Thought did, the album that he did with uh, DJ High Tech. He was featured on that one as well. So at that point, that's when I decided to sort of go back and dig into his discography, his catalog a little bit. So I listened to definitely listen to Road to Riches and definitely listened to four, five, six again and really amazed about it. But I just want to kind of get your perspective about, you know, first take of you listening to it this week and what you thought about it, being as though that you knew about him, but weren't really, really re- familiar with his music. You know, I listened to it. It wasn't, you know, some of them old albums you would see, like, all right, this young hard to listen to. What, what was that one we did? To, I think it took me like three times to get through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the storyteller, the one that Jay loves, so loved because it told a story. <laughs> uh, I can't think of. Are you I talking about the one we viewed early in the game? Are you talking about this was uh, uh, maybe but, Prince Paul, the yeah. Prince Amongst Thieves? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But this one, I guess you know me being a Mob Deep fan, I I like that street gritty shit so it didn't make it hard for me to listen to mm-hmm. it's definitely i was like okay all right i can see i know it's from back in the day i could tell the sound i said but he's spitting on here yeah i said all right i said all right i can see why they you know why they said it was a classic back a classic back then mm-hmm. and i was like you know I, i'm glad he didn't crank out a 20 song jam like this but mm-hmm. you know it was a good good amount of number i said good way to get through it listen to it good tracks you know, the, they they put the the track the album together well, mm-hmm. but you know you could def I could definitely listen to it. I can I also took from it where I can see where a lot of Bama took like from him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, and, like, and <laughs> like you can hear. I'm like, oh, yeah. Right. I said, oh yeah, I said, oh yeah. You can see where yeah. a lot of Bama took. Yeah, his his style, or, you know, like the music, the grittiness of the music, mm-hmm. and using you, you can see that's that they took that from him. Yeah. Exactly. And that's I'll get to that in a second, which is a point that I'll make that I think is probably the most important point that you'll hear on this podcast when it relates to cool G rap. But the particulars about four, five, six came out September 26, 1995, was recorded in 95, actually was recorded in a studio in Bearsville, New York, which is actually outside of Woodstock. So we did this in the, you know, secluded amongst a lot of different, uh, you know, outside of the city. This was on Cold Chillin' Records, and for those of you who don't know about Cold Chillin' Records, it's the iconic rap label that hosted a lot of the members of the famous Juice Crew, um, the legendary Juice Crew, and was around since the mid to late 80s into about 1997. This was actually the last album that was uh, recorded and released on Cold Chillin' Records before it went defunct in 1997. Producers on here was uh, Dr. Butcher, who did the majority of the production on here. There was also 
production from uh, T Ray, Buck Wild from DITC, Digging in the Crates, and also Naughty Shorts on here as well. As you mentioned, the production on here, you can sort of tell that it, it fit with the time. It's a lot of old school, but there's a lot of sampling on here. The samples on here are really of some not very well known records as far as when it came from soul artists in the 1970s and old school music, which is one of the things that I think I liked about this album. But to sort of go back to your point, Damo, listening to this and seeing those quotes and reading about Cool G Rap, everything that I know about him, this album to me sort of reinforced exactly what it I knew what his influence was. Like you listen to this album and it's just like, damn, okay, I'm listening to this. And from listening to other things like Road to Riches and Live and Let Die, you hear other influences. Then it's like, damn, now I can see that's like a method and technique that that Big Pun got this from. Or damn, that's a method and technique I can definitely hear when I hear Jay-Z, Jay-Z spit or when I hear AZ spit or stuff that I've heard from Nas, or stuff that I've heard from Tretch. <laughs> like, I'm running down all the different rappers and stuff and the influences that I'm hearing that were definitely influenced by Cool G Rap when I'm listening to this album. And I'm like, yo, this dude really had an impact out there as far as the, the, the type of guys that we heard spit. Like, the people that we were looking up to, even Mob Deep, Prodigy and Havoc, like, definitely, especially Prodigy, like, the mafioso terms and gang and street life and stuff like that. They same toward things you talked about, like when you were you're a mob deep fan. The things that we heard, an album we reviewed earlier this year, only built for Cuban links. The purple tape with Gray Kwan. Some of the themes you heard on that are the same type of things you heard Cool G Rap state in his career and reinforced on this album. For me, the biggest thing about this album was just one him being able to reassert himself as a powerhouse lyrically and flow wise. Then also to really take his storytelling ability. I mean, I think that's one of the things about Cool G Rap that the industry knows that he can tell stories. But when you sit here and listen to a lot of songs on here, it's just like, yo, my my man is sitting here really like almost every single song on here is about is a story about something or someone. But it reinforced to me my feeling about where he stood as far as like to me, the top four, the progenitors, the godfathers of lyrical rap, you know, flow rhymes internal rhymes multi-syllabic rhymes all those different things those four and he's right there up up there with them you start seeing those influences from all these different rappers we talked about like yo one of the first things i said when i heard big punch spit it was like yo this dude is almost like a clone of of cool g rap (laughs) like Mm -hmm. like when i heard big punch spit for the first time so to me like i didn't really listen to this much back in the day but when i started to dig into it like you said it's a nice length album only 11 song, eleven tracks, but it's only really nine songs on here because one of these songs actually was remixed by um, by The Butcher. The original track, It's a Shame, which is track number three on this, was a, was remade on track number number 10, which was um, The Butcher's mix. And The Butcher did a remix with a different type of beat, the same song and everything. So really only nine tracks on here. That's it, you know? But like you said, it was a good length, only about 42 minutes or so. It was a nice short reminder to sort of let people know like, yo, Koji Rap is still out here fucking the game up. He still can't fuck the game up if he needs to. So this really wasn't big commercially, but what they say, um, he's some of your favorite rappers. They his sons. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Nah, man, because (laughs) from that that era, from that era where we love them rappers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They his sons. So exactly. You can hear it. I'm like, yo, this show, like mm-hmm. sometimes some of the Jones, so I was like, hold on. Mm-hmm. Who featured on here? Mm, yeah. I'm like, oh, no, that's just him on here. Yeah. I said, oh, shit. Yeah. So <laughs> he has only three guest spots on here. It was B1, MF Grimm, and of course Nas. Those are yeah. only three featured, and all of those, they're all talented. I mean, that Nas speaks for himself. B1 and mm-hmm. MF Grimm, people may not know necessarily a whole lot about them. But they're skilled enough rappers to be on there. It's like, yo, if you're going to be on a track with Cool G Rap, you better bring it. The songs are featuring B1 and MF Grimm, those being Taken to War and then Money on My Brain. They more than enough held their own on a track to be on a track with Cool G Rap. But like you said, you listen to a lot of those things. Like I literally, like I said, I went down the list and it was like, okay, bam, big pun, bam, Tretch, bam, AZ, bam, Nas. Like I literally went down and picked out a style that every single one of these rappers definitely got their influence from. And I'm like, yeah, this is where they got this shit from. This is why this dude is so highly regarded. Like you said, they literally are his sons. Like <laughs> there's a list of rappers, Biggie, Raekwon, Black Thought, Scarface, MOP have all stated that he was an influence of theirs. Like 
it's almost like he was the OG on the block. Like you got some young G's coming up on the block and they aspire to do well, but this is the OG that everybody looks at and respects. That's what cool G rap is. <laughs> and then not only that, but when he rhymes, you can sort of tell that he sort of really lived some of this stuff that he was going through. Now, was he probably killing people? I don't really know for sure, but he makes me believe that he did. <laughs> like, you know, some rappers talk about killing people in their lyrics and you don't really believe them. Like when you talk about he had like before he started rapping, he was actually involved in the streets. And you can really tell like him talking about CeeLo and four, five, six, which is the second track and talking about the dice game and him talking about crime life. Like the fact that he said he used to sell drugs, like you can sort of tell when somebody's authentic, when they live the stuff that they did. He lived a lot of stuff that he did. And you can he's, it's believable with him. He did pioneer the whole thing about mafioso rap. He really did. There's a lot of the street things that you hear of stuff that you heard from Nas, the Escobar version of Nas, stuff that you heard from Raekwon, stuff that you heard from Mob Deep, from Capone and Noriega. I mean, you, a lot of that came from him. It did. Yeah, so you, too. you can tell. So now we're going to get into just some of the tracks that you liked and some of the highlights that you liked on here. So I'll ask you, Damo, like what were some of your highlights listening to this? Take him to war. Mm. Of course, we can't forget Fast Life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I like Ghetto Nose, For the Brothers. Yeah, that that's probably one of my favorites. Yeah, For the Brothers, man. That's, whew. yeah. I would say, yeah, I would say those, those right there was my highlights of the album right there. Mm -hmm. My first time going through. I was like, oh, I said, oh, I, you know, you grab the phone. What's, what track was that? Yeah. Oh, I, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah. All right. Yeah, indeed. So my favorites on here, um, I loved both it, the both versions of It's a Shame. The original that uh, had uh, the very laid back track and then also had the vocals that were being sung uh, on the on the hook. And then the Butcher's remix that had that very sinister beat. A nice, very nice kind of a switch up that they did with the Butcher doing that new beat to that remix. Take Him to War with B1 and MF Grimm. I love executionist style because of the lyrics and because he was really cold hearted and hardcore on that. Like some of the things as far as the lyrics on this are some of the darkest lyrics that I've heard on a track, especially even back then. Like people would think about like how the infamous, the lyrics were dark on that. And then a lot of mob deep stuff, the lyrics, like lyrics on this are really dark. Like seriously. <laughs> um, I love the samples on for the brothers Blowing up in the world, I actually liked that track because of, he was sort of going through his own personal history of him trying to make it. Of course, I love Fast Life because it's like you got Cool G Rap and Nas on the track and the two of them sort of going back. And my favorite part of that song might have been that third verse between the two of them sort of trading lines back and forth. I mean, I like Ghetto Nose. Money on my brain, I think I would have liked to switch that with It's a Shame, the Butcher's Mix to be in the last mm -hmm. track on the album. I thought Money on My Brain was an interesting track. I liked the wordplay on that, but I do think the sample was interesting, though. That sample that you heard is actually a sample by Herbie Hancock. It was a chameleon by Herbie Hancock and Overnight Sensation by Avalanche, or the two samples that were used on that particular record. And, you know, when I listened to Chameleon by Herbie Hancock, the one thing I'm not really thinking about is that being a hip-hop record. But, <laughs> but they sort of made it work, though. But, but th those are really my favorites. I think... If I had to pick between my favorite songs on here, I think for me, it would have to be between It's a Shame for the Brothers and Fast Life. And that's really where my favorites are at right now between those three. The production on here, though, between the, the Dr. Butcher, T-Ray, Naughty Shots, and definitely Buck Wild, they all kind of fit like what the album needed to be like this was not a radio album as you mentioned like you know what I'm saying like we don't we yeah, didn't grow yeah, up getting wasn't. we didn't grow up getting the radio hits from Kooji Rap like I think the only thing I heard him commercially even on somewhat was on the Brown Sugar remix by D'Angelo like that's the only thing I really ever heard of him like he was that was somewhat commercially viable but even that wasn't played on the radio but this was not a radio album this was really a street underground grimy type album and you knew the beats couldn't really be flashy or nothing like that. These had to be some really grunge, grimy beats that take you to the street. Like, that's really what the production needed to be. It needed to be street, definitely. So those are really, like, my highlights. A good amount of the album I could sit there and listen to. Like, as a matter of fact, I was helping our boy, um, you know, on Thursday night. We were driving around. I had to do driving for, like, two hours. I, I let this album say on play 
for the whole time that I was driving. I just kept the let replaying the whole thing over and over again. And I kept running into mm-hmm. those favorites over and over. And I kept coming back to those tracks that I liked that were my favorite. Yeah, it would have been nice. This is uh, I thought of when when I listened to it, I said, "Oh, this is this is a J type of album right here." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you he always shot the grittiness, the street. Yeah, like, street. I, said, oh, I, was, I got to like the first three, four track. I said, I said, oh yeah, this is a J album. J album. Right yeah, here. yeah, definitely. I know Jay definitely would appreciate this album. It's a shame we couldn't get him to come on, but I know he would like something like this and. It was even crazy because I was with Dave and Dave was listening to this and Dave thought it was something else. And I was like, he was like, you thought was this was this Elsa? I said, nah, this cool G rap, man. Like, yo, this is four, five, six, came out twenty five years ago. And he was sitting there listening and he was like, Yo, man, this this shit nice. I'm like, Yeah, yeah. It's cool, man. It's a nice, it's a nice little project. You know what I'm saying? And it's something, like you said, not something that we were going to be able to be aware of. Like you weren't even seeing videos like this. I sat there sort of the, the fast life video once on rap city that was it you didn't see no other videos there weren't any other singles so you really had to be in tune with the game to really know about this album or even read about it later to even know what was going on with it but definitely lyrically was ridiculously great i think the flow was great i think the production fit it wasn't i don't think the production was spectacular but i do think that it was made for what he was singing on these tracks i think it was a perfect soundtrack for those lyrics and the story he was telling so now we're going to look at any notable quotables. I don't know if you had a verse that you wanted to share. I definitely have one that I wanted to share from execution or executioner style. Did you have one? Um, I had it from uh, taking a more. Okay, go ahead and let's, let's hear it. Cause violence is contagious. I got them busting gauges. The 95 Larry Davis. And I'm wetting niggas for wages. Queen is the home of one, the known fella. And ain't no telling when I'm cracking your fucking melon. For the right amount of chips, I spit clips and hit whips, leaving niggas bloody the leather seats and their shit drips. <laughs> yeah, I think that was that B1 verse from Take Em to War. That second mm-hmm. verse, yeah. Yeah, nah, B1 and MF Grimm definitely had some highlights on here, man. And that was a that was interesting when he said he's 95 Larry Davis. And I was just like, damn, okay, so he's he talking that shit right there. Yeah. Yeah, cool, cool G rap on executionist style like this is crazy like i had to i think i reround this verse like two times to hear some of the lines again that he said on this so he's like as i steps aside the playground i lays down my laws at the door and any nigga that's looking for trouble gotta face this stuff with four fours i'll be packing my hip hollow tips inside the clip ready to rip a nigga's shit and make his wig split to the side of homicides committed i get rid of niggas quick because ain't no bullshit permitted i'm an outlaw this motherfucker villain doing killings i won't stop until the moors got bodies stacked up to the fucking ceiling ain't no drive-bys a mag and bag lady this guy's a surprise you got a hole between your fucking eyes niggas is grades catching strays from the blaze amazed by the ways i lay him down when my shit sprays crazy brains hanging and niggas veins are swinging banging and gunslinging even my own fucking ears are ringing Cause when I carry as much bigger than Dirty Harry's Do a Hail Mary I'm like Bloody Mary's out of your capillaries <laughs> mm. Mm. Pieces of flesh hanging off a nigga chest Cause the vest is what he dressed Couldn't fuck with the Smith and West Motherfuckers running for miles And body stacked up in piles I'm killing executioner style The line in particular here to me is <laughs> Cause I what I carry is much bigger than Dirty Harry's. Do a Hail Mary, y'all make Bloody Marys out of your capillaries, like nigga. Mm, 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 mm. That's ridiculous, yeah. dog. Make Bloody Marys out of your capillaries, like yo. It's a lot of verses on here that I could sit back and go through, but it's to me that's my favorite one because that's really raw right there. Like, yeah. and the imagery that he talks about as far as like the shit he man what. Yeah, it's just like you talk about like all these hardcore folks like, yo, I can see why like Mob Deep MLP like definitely looked up to this dude, man, because yeah. it's ridiculous. Like, yo, lyric play on this word play is ridiculous. And going through these verses and listening to him, like I think we round that like two or three times. Like, yo, what the fuck that nigga just say? Yo, like, <laughs> that's crazy, man. Wild as hell. One of the things that I think another thing that I took from this album is uh, really the fact that I was reading the story about him and they said that things really started getting hairy for them right around this album. When this album came out that, you know, it mentioned that he had, he went and recorded this in Bearsville, New York. Well, he did that because there was shit going on out in the streets and he was still out in the streets while he was still recording. And the word was that people put a hit out on him. So 
he left the city and went further up north and towards Bearsville to record this. There was, as the story continues, that he took his family and moved him out to Phoenix because he needed to get the fuck up out of New York, period. <laughs> so <laughs> he got low. So we talk about, like I said, you can tell that he lives the shit that he spits and the yeah. life that he's going through, you could tell that it's grimy. Like, yo, that sort of just reinforces the point that it's like, yo, this dude really went and recorded his album out of the city because niggas was trying to kill him. <laughs> and then he moved That's his family crazy. out of state almost That's halfway crazy. across the country. Because he didn't feel like his family was safe, dog. Yeah, that's crazy. that's like taking keeping it real to a whole nother level. <laughs> Golly. Dude. But he's still out here rapping, man. You know, the funny thing about Cool G Rap is that he just put out an album as recent as Return of the Dawn in 2017. And he just did a collaboration album with 38 Spash called Son of G Rap in 2018. So he's still out here making making records, man. And like I mean, he's 52 years old now. You know what I'm saying? So he's like the same age as like LL and right around the same age as, as Jay-Z and everything else. And he's still out here sort of doing music, man. So, you know, for those who don't know, he does have, uh, uh, they had, he had at least, I think, a couple of kids. But the first son he had, he actually had with none other than Corinne Steffens. Now, we all know who Corinne Steffens is, <laughs> <laughs> which is wild, man. But yeah, so he's definitely respected in the game, man. And reading a couple of articles about that, you understand how far his influence goes. So now we're going to get into the test, man, and see what it is you think about this album, Damo. So what is your verdict? Um, would you say that this is a certified classic, borderline classic, just a classic in its time or not a classic at all? I'm going to say it's a classic at its time, mm -hmm. but the lyrics, I would say, I put it above category. And I think production could have made it a, a certified classic, but you know, back then it's gritty rap. So it's definitely, yeah. it's certified for its time. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think his, I'm still, like you said, him still rapping today. I mean, that sound is back in now for real. So he probably can come with something with better, you know, you get in with some of these producers that's, that's doing gritty rap like Griselda and them yeah. and you probably give you a banger. Bruh, like you read in my mind. You know that, right? <laughs> because I was like, you know who I would love to hear Cool G rap with nowadays? I love to hear him on a track with like Benny and, and Conway. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you get them with them same you producers know? that they use yeah. for that gritty rap. Yeah. And even whoever uh, Jim Jones using mm. for, because Jim Jones giving you gritty rap too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On that El Chapo album, whoever he got on using them. If you get them, them, them couple of producers with what he's saying. Yeah. And he done lived it. Yeah. And he can give you some stories. And he a storyteller. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm pretty sure he probably can give you a classic album right now. You absolutely. Give him the right producer. Yeah, absolutely. He's still going to spit no matter what, man. Yeah. And you give him right producer, I think you can still put out a classic album now. But to be able to hear a track with maybe him and with Benny and Conway, yo. <laughs> and then you got three dudes who legitimately have been in the game. Conway, mm -hmm. Benny, and G-Rap. That's going to be something. Like, you talk about real rap, like three niggas that have been out there and lived it, that are vicious on the mic. And give them some production, yo. <laughs> yeah. We might need a petition for a, a, a Kyle collaboration album between G Rap, Benny, and Conway. Yo, that'd be album would be classic with the right production. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but to me, I'm actually going to go ahead and say that this is a borderline classic. It's borderline to me because I think that again, there wasn't a lot of commercial appeal. Appeal, not that there has to be commercial appeal when an album, classic album, is made, but I do think that this could have benefited from at least one single that really could have made this album become popular. I think that underground wise, this is definitely a classic certified classic for the underground heads, like the industry folks who have been there who are hip hop heads. But I think it's a borderline classic to me because I think it's aged pretty well, considering that it was 25 years ago. And the fact that the beats are the way that the beats are and the beats are fine. But the lyrics to me, I think, like you said, I put it, at a, at a 10 of 10, like at an 11 of 10, even now, 25 years later, being listening to it and being able to pick out, all right, bam, this is where Big Pun got this from. This is where Tretch got this from. This is Raekwon, Ghostface, this person, Biggie, all got this type of stuff from this dude, man. So I do think that it could have benefited from a really big single that could have taken this to the next level. And I think that the production, I think to me, is is at about a seven and a half to an eight, considering what the what the subject matter was. But if it had, if this production had been at a 10, this could have been a certified classic without a shadow of a doubt. 
Mm-hmm. So there we are. Cool G Rap 456, the last release on Cold Chillin' Records, released in September 26, 1995, 25 years ago. Make sure you at least go out there, go check it out, man. Listen to it. It's not a long listen at all. 42 minutes long. Just being able to list, look at the lyrical mastery of Cool G Rap, man. And also the production on there, be able to appreciate the really gritty and grimy sound that you hear. But go ahead and listen to this, man. Pick up Cold G Rap. And also make sure you go check out the Road to Riches with DJ Polo and also Live and Let Die and also Wanted Dead or Alive as well, man, because all really great music by Cool G Rap. And you can see where a lot of these rappers we talked about that he was their influence, where they got their style from. And that's going to wrap up yet another edition of The Vault. Please make sure you go check us out on our new host on Red Circle. You can also get to any one of our social media channels. If you go there to any of our social media sites, you can get to our link tree, which has all of our streaming sources and also all of our social media channels. For there, you can go to catching us on Instagram on at Vault CMR Podcast, on Twitter at Vault Classic, and on Facebook and YouTube, you can search for the Vault Classic Music Reviews. You can search, like the Facebook page, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We put our, our episodes up on our YouTube channel periodically after our episodes are on our streaming sources as another form of distribution. And make sure you're checking us out on social media, following us and liking our pages. We definitely want to make sure that we continue to interact with y'all. We do it here at The Vault, all for y'all. We appreciate your support. And if you have a friend, tell a friend and you make sure that that friend tells a friend. Always want to make sure that you keep your headphones on and your music loud, but not too loud. And in closing, we want to remind everybody to dream big because dreams are the basis for creation. Always create, motivate, and elevate. You were never destined to stay stationary or obsolete in this life. And on that note, we say peace. Thank you for listening and coming into The Vault. Please subscribe and follow us on Facebook at IV Creative and Instagram at IVECRE8.